Hey everybody, it's Rory from ANS Gear, and we're gonna look at two brand new products from Dai today. So we've got the Moss Air board that we're looking at, and we've got a gun that has the Moss Air board in it. This is one of the new colors, this gold to black fade, or black to gold fade, whichever way you wanna look at it. Um, and the wireless charging, or the cable-free charging mat that we've got there. So a couple things that you wanna know beforehand. If you have an M2 already, and you have the original MOS system, the method operating system, or method operating system board, none of what you see on here is compatible, okay? You must buy the new board, the Moss Air board, with the wireless charging receiver on it uh, in order to use it with the wireless charger. You cannot upgrade your current board that you have into the Moss Air board system. You have to buy a new one. Um, and then secondly, if you do buy the Moss Air board and you get the charging system, the original grips that come on your M2 will not work either. You must get uh, the new 2017 Dai M2 grips to accommodate the, uh, the charging receiver, the wireless receiver uh, for your, your charger. They need to be cut differently on the inside to accommodate this new piece that needs to sit on the back side of the grip. Uh, it sits actually over the top of the battery and there's just not, that room is not there in the original grips, so you need to have the new grips. So first off, can't upgrade your original board into the new one. You must get a new board that has the new stuff in it. And secondly, um, you can't use your old grips with the new board. You gotta get new grips. So those two things out of the way, let's talk about the features of the Moss Air board. So method operating system uh, Air, Moss Air board. Probably the biggest feature uh, is going to be that it is Evoke compatible. So that means that if you buy the Evoke system, let's say you got an i5 and you are, uh, got the Evoke system and you're gonna put it into there, the new board has, if I can move these pieces out of the way, right here, there's a little port right here. And with the Evoke system, you're gonna get a Bluetooth chip and that chip will drop in and when you have that chip plugged in, you will get a new screen, or actually not a new screen on your board, but you will be able to um, control a prompt on the screen about uh, enabling Bluetooth. The screen is there, the prompt is there, but you can't do anything with it uh, in the board without having that Bluetooth chip installed. As soon as that, that chip is installed, it lets you activate or turn on Bluetooth and lets you try to sync with other devices that are uh, compatible with it. So that's probably the biggest thing. All the information that the gun has will be able to transmit up to the Evoke system so you can hear it rather than having to look for it. You want to know how many uh, shots you got left. You want to know game timers. You want to know what your LPR is set at. All those things, it'll tell you inside your thing. You want to do training modes and all that crazy stuff that this thing does. Now it's compatible with that. And that's how you're going to get that information up to your Evoke system in your goggle. If you don't have this, and you order the Evoke system for your goggle, it's not gonna work. So gotta have this to work with the other thing. So they gotta go together. Um, second is the new charging system. We'll talk about this more towards the end after we kind of cover some of the other features of the board. Uh, you have now the option to double tap to turn off. They don't have an option to double tap to turn on, but to turn off, you can do that. And I've already set it up on here, so we'll turn it on. You guys should be able to see that screen right there. The flickering is normal. It's just the refresh rates is, refresh, refresh rates aren't synced up, so you see screen flicker on there. Um, but to turn off, two taps, shuts down. So a lot of people like the two tap system. I do. Um, I wish this had two tap to turn on as well, uh, but to shut it down, two taps makes it very, very easy. So that's controllable. You can turn it on, turn it off, do whatever you want to do. Uh, shot tracker. So now there's two options in the shot tracker to Accumulate shots, so if you wanna know how many shots you've taken during the day, which is going to be how many active trigger pulls you have had during the day. So if you are just dry firing your gun or you're shooting at the chrono or whatever it happens to be, those count as shots, so it will track those as well. So uh, at the end of the day, if you look at your gun and you've got like 4,000 shots on it, well, make sure you know how many were dry fire, how many were actual paintball, how many times you were sitting at the bench with the gun degassed and you're like tick, 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 just shooting your gun, those are gonna count. So don't forget that. Um, so you can have it count up or count down. You can set it at 
uh, you know, to tell the gun how many balls you are taking onto the field with you, 1,500 balls, 1,000 balls, whatever it happens to be, and it will give you warnings as you shoot down. It, I think it's 500, 250, 150, 150, somewhere around in there. I might have had that 150. Maybe there might not be a 150. Um, so, uh, But anyway, it will tell you as you go down. Uh, on the gun, it will. And if you have that hooked up to the Evoke system, it'll tell you in your ear, 100 shots left, 50 shots left, so that you know where you stand in a game rather than searching around on your back for pods uh, and hoping that you've got an extra pod that you missed on your back. You'll know exactly how much paint you have. And that goes for the game timer as well. Anything that you've got system-wise in here that can be fed up to the Evoke system, it'll do it. So you game timer, you want to know what game timer is left? You can, it'll tell you. Shots, you want to tell you. Training modes, it'll tell you. Like all that stuff, it tells you when to snap shoot, tells you when to do things if you want to train. It helps you with those things. So all that information can be sent up there with this new board setup. All right, so uh, new firing modes. Outlaw firing mode, what does it mean? Uh, basically, it is a firing mode that you can completely control in every aspect any way you want. You want it to immediately ramp after one trigger pull? Great. You want it to shoot a billion balls a second? Great. Um, you can't really do that. But uh, you can control everything. And as the name implies, it's an outlaw firing mode. It is not tournament legal in any way. So don't try to walk onto a tournament, uh, into a tournament with that mode set up on your gun. Put it in a tournament legal mode. But if you're just playing with your buddies and you want to blast the crap out of them, you can do whatever you want. You know. So that gives you that option. You're not just limited to what they give you, which is cool. Uh, high contrast play screen. So let's see if we can see this in here. So normally you get a screen that is a black background with the white lettering and some colored lettering on there. But um, if you want a different contrast, maybe you want an all white, stark white background with black lettering, you can do that now as well. So uh, we would just go into our programming, choose a profile, go into our data settings, uh, select your play screen, and then you've got, this is like the standard play screen that's on there. I'm trying to get the glare out of there. There we go. That's another play screen. It's got, you can put your name in it. This one's got uh, uh, shots, what mode you're shooting in, big and bold. But then this one right here has an all white background with black letters. So it completely flips the image that you're looking for or seeing and just giving you a different contrast setup. So we'll select that one and then we will Oops, there we go. And we're gonna go through all these and exit out of here. There's so many options in these things now. I mean, there's a lot of options to begin with, but, oops. Now there's just crazy options. All right, so there's our main screen right there with now the white background on it, which is super cool. Uh, tournament style play screen, so now, the, the, the screen, the play screen that we're on is going to give all the information necessary for an official, a referee, a judge, or whoever it is to come over to your gun and look at it and know exactly what the gun is doing. Um, to know whether you are legally shooting uh, a certain balls per second, you're over, whatever it is, it's going to give you that option or it's going to give that information out so people don't need to grab your gun and shoot it and test it and do all those things with it. They can actually physically see what the gun is set at so that they know this is a legal gun to be playing right now. And that just makes it easier all around, less time with somebody else with your gun or somebody else doing things with you, or just getting in your way. Um, the play screen, having it on there, giving all the information necessary, just makes it easier. Uh, all right, what else we got here? Uh, boot screens. Now there's three available slots for custom boot screens. So uh, on the last board, there was just one. You could put whatever you wanted in there. But now they give you three options, and you can choose between the three. So if you want a picture of your cat, you want a picture of me, you want a picture of whatever you want a picture of there, your favorite car, I don't know. Whatever it happens to be in there, you want to put it in there, you can slay, uh, save three different uh, slots, I guess, three different images, and select between the three. So um, that's nice. I wish they had done that before, because there's all sorts of goofy things you can put in your gun. Um, so having those three pictures, it just adds a little bit more uh, of a personal touch to your gun, lets you you know have a tournament picture, a rec ball picture, and just a gun sitting on your wall picture, something like that, uh, which is cool. More options, the better right there. And then uh, the system check screen on. Typically, if you take your joystick and you go to the left, 
it comes up with a um, system screen. It tells you everything, how far you away from services, total shots, uh, pressure settings, firing modes, all that stuff. Now it's a little bit more um, information on them on the new screen. It gives you everything you need to know on there. It says in my uh, bullet point thing that I have over there that you push to the right to access it. Uh, on my guns that I have here, everything that I have here, you push to the right like it is right now and the timer starts. Turn the timer the right side like I did right here on the right side if you hold it down resets the timer. If you go to the left, that brings it up. So that just could be whoever typed this up, got it backwards. Um, wait to see the, the true literature when it comes out to see what that is. So um, I think they meant to say to the left. Uh, neither here nor there. Uh, and then service system disable features. This one to me, I, I'm kind of torn about. Um, system service features are there for a reason. If you can't manage to fix your gun without having it be told to you, you need to keep those service features enabled. The new system, the new board lets you disable service features or service alerts so that they're not nagging you. They're not on the screen. Um, I, I've always been on, on, on the path or the theory that um, you should be maintaining your own gun and you should know as much about it as you can so that you can fix your own problems should you need to. Now, obviously there's problems you might not understand and you need to take it to somebody and I get that. Uh, but being able to service your gun is part of owning the gun. Uh, and the features are there to help remind you, hey, look at your bolt, look at your regulator, look at your LPR, look at these things and service them. If you just disable those features, you're gonna forget about them and you're not gonna do the work and then you're gonna end up bringing it to someone like me to fix your gun, which I'll, I'll take your money and fix your gun, but it's not necessarily something you need to do. So you can disable the features. I would recommend you leave the features on and remember to do the maintenance. Let it remind you, hey, take care of your bolt. Take care of your bolt. Tell the feature that you've already done it and it will go away till the next time. So. Um, I might catch a lot of heat for that, I don't know, but I would definitely say leave them on. Um, and that really, that's a lot of the gun right there. Uh, the mat is a different story. So here we got the mat, we got the gun sitting on the mat right there. So we've got two parts to this. We've got the mat, which is like a rubberized foam almost, has a cutout of the gun so you know exactly where you need to lay the gun. And then has a little section right here to put some tools, I guess. I'm not quite sure, uh, but they calling it a wireless charging mat or tech mat. What do they call it? Cable free charger and tech mat. Um, tech mat, I guess if you want to be literal about it, a mat this size really doesn't help you doing tech work. Um, if you wanted to take this mat and stick it on a normal size tech mat, I would consider that being on a tech mat and tech matable at that point. This is just too small for me personally, my personal opinion, to do tech work on. Obviously it'll protect your gun, you can set it on there. It makes a nice little stand or, um, I don't want to call it a stand, a little spot for you to lay your gun down. Uh, but a tech mat, I don't know. Um, the charging system though is cool. It just plugs in USB style, so it's USB to mini USB. And this is the charger right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this thing in. When it's plugged in, the light will be green. You can see it on there right there. All I have to do is just set that on top. And you can see how my light turned blue now. It's telling me that it's charging. So the gun is charging as it sits in my hand right now. I didn't need to plug it in. I didn't need to do anything. It's charging. So normally this will sit right inside of here. When it's sitting inside of here, you can't see the light that's on here anymore. So you don't know if your screen is off, but the gun needs to be on first off to charge, um, whether it's actually charging or not. What you could do easily is cut a little bit of this foam out and you could see the light easier. Or what you wanna do is when you set it on there, just turn your gun on real quick, just so the, light, the screen lights up and the charging icon will come up over the battery. So you'll know if it's charging or not. You don't need to see the light on the side. It's cool to see it, but you don't need to see it because you can just look at the uh, screen and it will tell you right there. So um, don't worry about that being covered. It doesn't really make a difference right there. Um, oh, the mat itself, the charger will work for other stuff that is wirelessly charged as well. So you have a phone that does it, you have a tablet that does it, you have some other device 
that charges wirelessly now. A lot of things are kind of moving in that direction. Uh, you can use this. So it will charge other wirelessly chargeable compatible devices uh, as well. So not just your gun. But I like being able to just lay it down on there and have it charge. It really makes it easy. Uh, you're not plugging something into the gun and unplugging something in the gun. You can leave this on your table, on your workbench, whatever. Just leave it plugged in. When you're ready, just throw your gun down, let it charge. You don't have to worry about it. So I like that feature. That's a, that's a cool feature. Um, this as a tech mat, yeah. I guess you got to call it something, right? Um, but the package, all in all, it's awesome. It does an amazing amount of things. It uh, is really the next step in connecting all these seemingly um, disconnected devices, the mask, the gun. Um, if you scroll through or you look at the screen on the guns now, the new Moss Airboards, they have a Bluetooth symbol, so you know when the Bluetooth is on. And when it connects to whatever it is, like the i5, there's an i5 logo on there, which will light up and say that you're connected. But next to that is an R2 logo. So I'm assuming that in the future, they're gonna have this board be able to connect to not only your goggle, your, your Evo goggle, but also be able to connect to the loader as well. And who knows what they're gonna be able to do with that. But having all three of those things in conjunction, talking with each other, I think is pretty cool. And it's the next step in equipment, just everything working as one cohesive unit rather than disjointed pieces. So um, definitely packed with features, packed with possibilities. Cool factor is definitely there. Um, and it works the way it's supposed to do. So check them out through the website, the new Moss Air board for the M2s and the wireless charging stations. They're available through the website. Order yours now through ansgear.com.